Hi, welcome to a new video. Um, if you don't know what I've done, I converted this little Peugeot partner into a camper a few years ago. Um, but it gets cold in there. I've tried electric blankets and everything else, but I thought I'd upgrade to a diesel heater. So in this video, you're going to see me try and fit it. And I'll explain why I went for an all-in-one system. And there's got to be a lot of modifications in this. So I hope you join me for this one. And I'll explain why we're going to make a lot of changes as well. Let's get in there now. Bang. Right, the reason I went for an all-in-one, um, basically, is one, is the simplest of things, is the fuel tank. The ones that you get separate, they're normally a 10-litre um, unit. Now, I didn't design this camper van with um, a diesel heater in mind, so there's no real space to put a fuel tank. Um, I mean, my benches are higher, well, lower, sorry, my benches are lower than what the fuel tank is, so I'd have to put it somewhere else. It's not possible, so an all-in-one system like this, this, you know, the, the bench here, it just fits around about a centimetre just under, and it's going to go this end, because that's where I've got space underneath to be able to drill the hole. But there's a slight problem in this little bit here. We have the toilet, um, so it's got to be moved around, and then the toilet needs to come out because of the way that I open these. And I think the idea is, is to flip this over that way instead of me rebuilding the whole lot. So we're going to have a go at doing that so this is going to be a bit of fun and see what happens and see if i can cock it up so i'll show you what we've got to do down here right i mean basically this is the problem is there's the diesel heater and that's where the toilet was so the toilet now would come out to past here which this bit pulls out and supports the bed so yeah that's going to be the slight problem um is if i do it like that i'm not going to be able to get the toilet out with the way i've designed this you know and everything so my idea is is like i say to flip this completely upside down so the the um slidey out bit is towards the back which is where the diesel heater is going to be which will be easier for the flexible pipe and that's where i need to get the bits um, the exhaust and the um, air intake down i bought a proper turret for that because that's the better option again links um down below for all the stuff that i've actually bought um so basically yeah my idea is to flip this over because i don't fancy rebuilding the whole lot really so yeah we're going to just um, unscrew that flip it over and see if it actually works idea of tipping this upside down and that so that that is the other end if you know what I mean is going to work this where it pulls out has got to be but that way the problem is is it's wider this way than that way which means I've got to take the front fascia plate off this bit and then but the problem is is it's screwed in through the fronts on here which means I've got to take the carpet off. This backboard here needs to be moved then to this side. Um, also, yeah, that bar then needs to go down to there, which isn't a problem because that's where the diesel heater would go. Um, but also um, the end, this bit, um, I don't know if you can see there, basically comes out like a triangle bit, which then goes to the frame of the car because it goes up. So that needs to be chopped off anyway to go where it is. And then that, so it may mean moving that board over to that side. So basically it's taking the whole lot apart near enough and rebuilding it, which is not what I wanted, but we'll get on with that. It's actually the next day. I moved the ends around. Really what I should have done is just cut the one end off and attached it somehow instead of doing that because it was a pain in the backside. But the thing was, is my idea was when the drawer unit here pulls out that the pipe that comes with it expands out. Unfortunately, there's not that much expandability on it. So yeah, I could buy another pipe, but you know, it's not worth it. So what I was gonna do is just 
build it in but whatever that that's the thing for doing the one problem that i've had which um stupid me basically most people use one of those it's a turret so you just drill a big hole like that your pipes come through they, they, they attach onto there bang done there you go you know less chance of anything coming through seal it blah 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 but with an all-in-one unfortunately where those would clamp onto there is actually higher up you know you're talking like two odd inches so you can't actually mount this now yes i could take this apart because it's got exactly what i want a smaller fuel tank you know the diesel heater it's all the electrics every, everything's there so and i can mount it on here but the idea of this camper is to have this being able to be removed if i need to use it as a little van but still keep that there so yeah that wouldn't work so that is sodded off so what i've got to do is drill like two holes for the pipes and then seal those in well the problem is again because they're like two inches up it's hard to actually find where you've got to do so what i've actually done is i've got some plastic piping i don't know if you can just see there um, that i've cut to length so that there and what i'm going to do is chop out a rectangle part underneath there that a little flap so this one can go straight through which is the air inlet but then that one the big gap around it so it's not touching wood or anything else you use a heat sealant and we should be okay so that's the plan and i have checked where it is it's clear because it goes where the spare tire is which i don't have one in this i've got one of the cans um i've got to get a space saving one at some point but that's another story so we're going to just do that i've lifted the one lot of carpet up going to just um, mark out the other do a flap and then cut that away. So let's get on anyway. Stop me chatting off. Right, I've drilled that out now, cut out the insulation, so I've just got to drill the holes now. Um, and basically, the one for the inlet is 26 mil, the other one's 29 mil. Well, basically, I'd only got a 32 mil bit, so I went and got one um, from my local tool station, um, but then got back and realised I hadn't got the right adapter but my back was in bits so I couldn't go back so I've just gone back this morning and got that so now at least we can drill the hole so what I'm going to do is just drill a little hole in there like a pilot hole to where it's going to go there and then just drill through these and then at least I can get the exhaust through because I've had to rebuild that I won't bore you with the details I'll explain a bit later so yeah we're going to get on with that hopefully it's going to be easy to go through this hopefully so let's get on Right, the holes were drilled. That was an absolute pain in the backside. Um, I broke through drill bits. The one drill bit that come with it, I needed to extend out and then it wouldn't fit back in. So I've had to use other drill bits. I've gone slow, I've gone fast, but at the end of the day, they're done. And what I've done is I've coated the outer, um, or I've filed it down and coated it with a bit of hammerite just to protect it. The um, pipes are on now. The one thing that I would recommend if you get these, get better Jubilee clips, because those are rubbish. I mean, I clean out ponds, I use Jubilee clips a lot on pipe work, and those are the cheapest ones you can get and they're, they're crap i mean the pipe just kept coming off so get yourself some good jubilee clips so the pipes are in now through the hole so what i'm going to do is because i don't know exactly where it's going directly i've got a little bit of movement so i'm going to put the baits back in screw this in take the base away so i can get to there to silicon it in what i'm going to do is i'm going to jack the car up a little bit just so that um on jack stands as well just so i can um, get underneath to silicon it that way and then silicon it this way so we'll get on with that now eventually got it in and um, basically i siliconed it i left it then for 24 hours and then put a lot more silicon around my idea was was to silicon and then pull this out and keep the pipes there to seal inside but that didn't happen that's why i did a second seal the bit that's caused me a lot of problems is the um, bench because i've had to re completely redesign it but that's another thing so what i've temporarily done because the cable they give you isn't long enough to even get to my electrics so i've just piggybacked on a connection i've got going to the inverter just with some three core cable trimmed down 
and then so we'll just get the fuel in get it on and see if it actually works the exhaust and everything isn't fully in yet I haven't bolted it in so we'll see her. we'll just get it going and then take that from there sorry about the quality i'm filming off my phone um so yeah so we've got power to it we've got that there well let's just press the power i should look at the manual i think there we go hold it down My exhaust is facing this way at the moment, so I'm just coming out the way. Oh, there we go. Right, the pump's going now, so... Nothing coming through the exhaust yet, but it's ticking. I mean, again, if you look at the um, descriptions on these on eBay, Amazon, wherever, they say they're quiet. That ain't quiet, which we all know, but yeah, just wanting to bear in mind. Right, um, it's going, as you can hear, um, it's clicking away. The exhaust is pretty quiet, even though I haven't screwed the silencer and everything on yet because um, I was going to do that in a bit um, but yeah that's working there is a bit of a smell from it but it's like you know the new smell that you get from using like any like a toaster or you know George Foreman that type of thing um, but I've had it literally running in the van with the doors closed for around about 10 minutes with the carbon monoxide detector and it was absolutely fine so yeah I've just let it um, just go down to level two and I mean once I got in this after 10 minutes it was really warm and I remember I'd had the boot open to start with so that, and it is you can say it is pretty cold this morning so yeah it's going at the moment so get the thing in switch it all off and then uh, yeah see what happens but I may run it for a little bit you know about half an hour with the carbon monoxide and everything going and we'll see so the sun's in your eyes there so yeah we're, 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 I think I've done it I think Right, there's actually a few things I want to do, um, slightly different. I want to put this on the cable that goes through with a switch on, so I can actually just turn the display and everything else off because I always like to conserve power. Now, yes, it may not be drawing that much, but again, you know, for, what, 60% of the time, I'm never going to be using it, so we can turn that off. Um, so I'm going to do that. The other thing as well is this one, the display panel's there. So what I'm going to do is, because that's now going to be closed in, I'm going to put that over here. So what I'm going to do is just chop the, well, there you are, chop the wire and basically extend it down and up and do that. So a few little modifications just to make it easier for me anyway. Right, I've rewired that, didn't realise there's a bloody connector on the end, so, but I've soldered it, I'm not good at soldering, so anybody watching, you know, don't because I'm not that good, my hands don't work as well as they should, but at the end of the day it's soldered, the wire's going up there, I've got to put it behind the carpet here, but it's not a problem, but it's going behind there, control panel now up there, it's all working, I've tested it again, carbon monoxide going for like half an hour in here, you know, uh, carbon monoxide detector I should say, no problems and everything else, so yeah, so basically get the cabinet back on. Right, all fitted, bench back in. Now, with this, I didn't really talk about this. This was originally just one piece and the door opened that way, well, the door opened that way for the toilet and this way pulled out to support the other side of the bed. This side, well, like I say, I had to make that solid, then I had to shorten these, and then I had to move the toilet to that end and flip it upside down, which I probably didn't need to do and everything else, then drill the hole for the vent. So yeah, so I had to really, really modify this, but it's back in. It took me absolutely ages to get back in because I'd got to get it down, move the cables, blah, blah, blah but it just wasn't seating right and the main bit was trying to get the bloody pipe uh, between the diesel heater and the little outlet there it, it's only a short span of like you know a few inches yeah because trying to get it fitted was just a 
pain in the proverbial if you know what I mean but yeah it is done it's working and everything else now underneath with the exhaust basically what I've had to do with that is I've just mounted it on like a, a makeshift bracket for the moment um, basically because I've got my back problems and everything else trying to get under there and trying to make something it's off the ground uh, it's attached it ain't gonna move and the air vents over that way so it's absolutely fine it, it this is what your class is a bodge job but at the moment it's just for me to test because the idea is now this is working check for carbon monoxide for over an hour no problems whatsoever so like I say it's ready to go so this is all back in so what I'm going to do is go out for the night somewhere which is what I like to do I like my landscape photography you know so yeah um, I hope you join me on the next one anyway you know testing it all out but yeah I mean as far as fitting them they are pretty easy as long as you've first of all got the tools and the space retro fitting one like I've done yeah it's a bit of a problem it's took me a lot longer than I thought I mean for me it's took me a week but I can only work like a few hours a day um, on it because of, of my back problem and, and bits and pieces but that's another story so yeah it's all gone pretty damn well really time will tell um, so it's all hooked up and um, yeah so in the next video you'll see me actually trying it so please if you do like this video like subscribe do all the YouTube stuff I mean yes it's not perfect um, and I'm not saying it is perfect and I'm not saying follow these instructions I mean at the end of the day you know you know yourself be safe everything else there's another carbon monoxide detector so there's going to be two in here you know so it's always going to be safe and you know I've had to do it the way that I can in this vehicle um, so yours will be a bit different but yeah it's it's gone pretty much okay you know in the respect it's just yeah it's just took me a long time and it does really get hot in this little van i mean i had it on like four or five left it for like 15 minutes got in here and i mean you was absolutely sweating so yeah in this space especially at night with the curtains up you know you won't need it on that i've got to play about with the settings and like i say the control panels up there so yeah it's um, not been too bad so i'm i'm mumbling now and everything what i'm going to do now is i'm going to sign off and uh see you in the next one so again thank you for watching and goodbye for now bye